All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from San Diego, a very rainy San Diego actually. And today I am delighted to be joined from Massachusetts by Shmuley Munitz. How are you doing, Shmuley? I'm doing great, thank God. Thanks so much for having me on the show. Yeah, of course, of course. And Smoothie is the visionary force behind um, Munitz and Company, a tax advisory firm for entrepreneurs, formerly a graphic designer and a non-profit focused marketing agency. Shmuley brings his creative out-of-the-box thinking to the world of wealth building. A year ago, he took a leap of faith alongside his wife and leaving their respective roles, they decided to guide entrepreneurs to financial success. All right. And what we're going to talk about today is, well, it is that time of year where you're all getting your stuff from your accountants or whatever to put forward, put all your tax stuff together. Um, so let's talk about tax uh, and winning the game of tax. So, I mean, Shmuley, let's face it. I mean, when you mention tax to most people, you know, they kind of break out in a cold sweat, right? And and when they look at tax, you know, uh, tax regulations, tax laws, then they just shut down and probably like never lose the will to live, right? So, uh, so, um, <laughs> so taxes. tell me, yeah, yeah. So exactly. So tell me first of all, um, how you, why you think you can win at the game of tax, and then let's get into it. All right, sure. So, so first of all, taxes, what I mean when I say it's a game yep. is that, like you said before, taxes are inevitable. There's most people going to fear taxes. And I think looking at it as a game to win changes your mindset about taxes and viewing you and the government or your business and the government as a partnership and thinking it in those terms is going to change how you look about taxes and also how you're going to approach the taxes and actually be able to use it as a tool to grow your business. Cause you're gonna be looking at how to win the game and you're gonna see that by learning the rules of the game, you'll be able to master it. Yeah, cause I mean, that, that's a that's an interesting perspective. Yeah, cause most people, let's face it. I mean, you feel like that you're in a, almost like an adversarial relationship with the, with the government or certainly, you know, they're not operating maybe, you know, on your behalf, they're operating on their behalf. At least that's, that's how we perceive it to be. So, so tell me a little bit about how, how does, how does the government influence, uh, how do they use tax to influence behavior in the first place? Sure. So it's not a new concept. Governments have been doing it for thousands of years, mm -hmm. using taxes to influence the way the, you know, what activities their citizens are going to pursue. There's a, a funny example. At some point, one of the last czars of Russia took a tour through Europe and he wanted to make his country more like the European countries. So beards were getting out of fashion. So he decided to make a special tax on beards and everyone mm -hmm. had to carry a token if they wanted to have a beard and he had to pay a special tax. So they were using the taxes to get people to even look a certain way. Um, mm -hmm. America started off, like this country started off very against taxes, right? We had the Boston Revolution, mm -hmm. the, the whole revolution, the Boston Tea Party. And it sort of it started without any kind of income tax, just taxing on tariffs. And eventually, because of the wars that we've had, right? Wars are expensive. And eventually the government got into place the income tax. And then kind of after World War II is when Western countries really um, took it to a new level of using the tax to influence behavior. So what I mean by that is we have a tax system that's now designed to encourage you to start a business because you're going to be able to create more jobs, mm -hmm. which is going to create more revenue for the government. They're encouraging you to invest in real estate. They're encouraging you to invest in the economy. So by looking at the tax law and following it, you could actually see what the government wants to encourage. For example, I think a great example is the opportunity zone. So I, I used to live in New York City and all these neighborhoods in New York City popping up these beautiful new buildings. So instead of the government trying to go in and clean up those neighborhoods mm -hmm. and build housing for people, they realize we can give a special credit in these zones. If you invest in those areas, you get a special credit. And the investors went and took the risks and the face of these neighborhoods completely changed. Yeah. So, um, so tell me a little bit about, uh, uh, um, because like we don't often look behind what everything is doing. We're just seeing a lot of taxes and, and the tax code here is, uh, 
quite uh, complex as you could you would know better than I. Uh, so are you, are you saying that if you take a different approach, maybe as a business owner and figure out like, how can I work this to my advantage? Or how can I access schemes? How can I be as tax efficient uh, as possible? But especially with the entrepreneurs, I mean, a lot of times entrepreneurs, small businesses, you're scrambling around. So maybe you don't have the advice you need, or maybe you don't have the foresight to uh, to take on some of these issues. Exactly. So I, I think it starts with a mindset. Most entrepreneurs start off, like you said, we fear taxes. Mm -hmm. We fear the government, we're going to mess up and the government's going to come and they're going to, they're out to get us. And if we make one mistake, we're going to be in big trouble. But once you understand that you could actually be in, like I said before, it's a partnership. So the government wants to encourage these behaviors. And if you decide to follow the tax law and invest in those areas and take advantage of the tax law, you'll grow rich and the government will accomplish its goals. It's a change of mindset. Instead of the government being out to get me, I'm now a partner with the government. And instead of just being, you know, the passive partner that I just go to my job, get my paycheck and I pay the government, they do whatever they do with the money. Here I'm being an active partner. For example, that opportunity zone. You're, the government has this goal of creating that that building in this neighborhood and you're going and instead of paying the government to do it, you do it and the government gives you the tax break. So you are basically taking your tax dollars and putting it directly to the same end result it would have gone to. You're kind of controlling where your tax money is going. So you end up with more money and you still, it's not like you're cheating the system and not participating in society. You're being mm -hmm. just an active partner instead of a passive partner. So once you see that mindset, then it really opens you up to what's possible. Then you're going to go to your tax advisor and you're going to be asking a whole different sort of questions. Instead of being timid about the tax law, you're going to take a, I guess it's a more aggressive approach, mm -hmm. but without being careless or negligent or just trying to find loopholes and cheat the systems, but by understanding the law or having your tax advisor understand it and guide you within the law to find the legal ways of reducing your taxes. So when you when you work with entrepreneurs, what are some of the ways you are able to to help them? What are some of the creative things that you can do? Maybe the eye opening things, the things that kind of surprise them when you when you start working with them. So one example that I love to give is in real estate. There's a the the depreciation is a very it gets people very excited because it has a magical effect almost. So in general, when you buy equipment or stuff for your business mm -hmm. and it slowly you know deteriorates over time yep. so you get to deduct the the cost of it over time as it runs out of its use and you get to do the same with real estate property and in real estate it's referred to as depreciation mm -hmm. but in this respect the property is actually appreciating in value while you're deducting the cost of the depreciation so let's take the example if you buy like a 500 five hundred thousand dollar property. So over the course of 27 and a half years, you get to deduct a certain amount per year that you take off your taxes. Mm -hmm. At the same time, through the course of those years, your property, if you picked a good neighborhood and you're doing it right and you understand real estate, it's probably appreciating in value. So that's one like exciting area that opens mm -hmm. people's eyes to what's possible. Yeah, that, that's that's um, that's a really interesting one because I'd, I'm I'm sure there's a lot of people are unfamiliar unfamiliar with that. Do you do you have any other examples like that? Because these are truly fascinating. Sure. So another example is is let's say a strategy that's pretty well known. A lot of people are aware that the wealthy individuals are really going to involve their family members in their entrepreneurial activities. Maybe they're going to have their kids involved in the business or their spouse involved in the business. And they're going to use that to get a lot of tax write-offs. For example, hiring your children and paying them a salary, you could take advantage of your child's standard deduction amount. I think for mm -hmm. this year, it's $13,500 of that's going to be tax-free income that you pass on to the child. Yeah. And you could put it into an account for when they grow older. You could use it towards their expenses. Once you Obviously, it has to be done properly, and, and we explain to our clients exactly yeah. how to get it done. But another, this also shows you another area where it's a, that partnership, that almost a win-win between the business owner, the entrepreneur, and the government. 
So what's the government's goal in allowing entrepreneurs? They make it relatively easy and this big benefit for hiring your children. Mm -hmm. The way the government sees it is they're encouraging the next generation of entrepreneurs right. to go and take those risks, build those businesses, just like they're just like the parents are doing. So they're actually giving an incentive for you to involve your kids in the business. And they're going to let you get these big deductions for it because they want you to encourage the next generation. Yeah, no, that's, that, that's, that's fascinating as well. And a, and a, and a great idea, <laughs> great way, a great way to save money. And also, you know, to, as you said, to, uh, to start bringing the next generation into the workforce. Um, so, I mean, I think a lot of people, you know, when they're starting out or whatever, they may have a tax, they may have a tax advisor, maybe they have, maybe it's the same one they used for their personal taxes, or maybe it's a referral to a friend. But what should people, what should entrepreneurs be looking for? And how should, how can they, find the right tax advisor one who's going to be creative like you are as opposed to one somebody who's just going to you know you're going to pay a certain amount of money and they're going to just do the bog standard stuff for you so i think it comes back to what we spoke about in the beginning that it's mindset yeah. Yeah. you want to find an advisor who shares this mindset and this approach to taxes that there are legal ways that you could and should and it's actually encouraged to take advantage of and to find someone with that same win-win mindset that they should be having and you should be having as an entrepreneur is number one, when you sit down with an accountant, the first thing you want to see is do they have like the time for you? So if you ask them mm -hmm. kinds of questions about their philosophies, about how they view taxes and money, if they don't really seem interested in answering right off the bat, you know, it's not someone that's going to do much more than the paperwork for you. Right. You want to be able to have conversations and discuss things and second of all, the kinds of questions you want to be asking them is to get to the heart of that mindset. And you can even give them scenarios. You can give them examples from your own business. Like, hey, I bought this property this year and here's how much I made. Here's how much I paid. What could I have done differently or better to get a lower tax bill when the year end comes? And mm -hmm. you see if they're going to be thinking proactively on your behalf or they're just going to be saying yes or no answers like, oh, you could deduct that. Oh, no, you can't deduct that instead of, well, let me show you your options and maybe you'll need to change something. Actually, if you if you do that property in a different way or if you go get a cost segregation or maybe your business needs to be a different entity, they start giving you options of what you could actually do differently. Then, you know, they're going to be thinking proactively on your behalf, not just, you know, reacting to whatever info you give them and not digging any further. Yeah, because let's face it, I mean, a lot of times, uh, whether it's our own personal or business taxes, you know, we tend to put them in, get them done, signed off, paid, rebated, whatever, and then move on. But we, we rarely kind of stop to go, as you just said there, maybe to review how we could have done things differently. Maybe there are ways we could have uh, constructed things differently. But that kind of conversation, I, I don't think many people have that. Right. And I think I'll shout out a great resource for this. And also uh, the place where I first came across a lot of this mindset that changed my mind about taxes. There's a book called Tax-Free Wealth by Tom Wheelwright. And he has at the end of it, there's a whole chapter with maybe 20 questions that you could actually use to interview your accountant or your CPA to see if they could be more than a CPA, but be the right tax advisor for you. So mm. that's a great resource you could look at. No, I, I, absolutely, absolutely. And then, um, are is there any are there any new taxes or regulations coming that you see that maybe are it could be really advantageous to entrepreneurs? I think the exciting one, if we go back to real estate and the same example mm -hmm. of depreciation, one of the reasons it's on my mind is because there's one facet of it called bonus depreciation, where instead of taking it over the lifetime of the building which could be either 27 and a half years or 39 years, depending on the type of property. There's something called bonus depreciation where it's a special provision. The government will allow you to take a lot of that depreciation up front. And right now in the bill that I think is, is still hanging out in the Senate, they want to pass and they want to bring back hundred percent depreciation, at least for the next while. Wow, the hundred percent depreciation—that's pretty good. Uh, and and then, are there are there any are there any areas that you think people should be wary of, or should make sure that they check in with their with their tax advisor around? Are there are there any like pitfalls that you often see? 
I think two of the pitfalls that I see, one is people wait till it's too late. So they're going to come to their advisor now. They're going to come to advisor tax season and say, okay, what are my options? Mm -hmm. And it, it, it's a little bit too late to do a lot of that because number one, if you want to do it properly, you can't just you know start backdating stuff. You have to do it from the beginning, have the proper documentation and do it right. And there's a lot more that you could take advantage of if you're, if you're being proactive versus waiting till the end. So you want to talk with your advisor early and often. You want to mm -hmm. talk to them at the beginning of the year and you want to meet with them regularly throughout the year. We had a client come to us. He runs a construction company and he's getting a new fleet of vehicles. How many people go to their accountant, you know, asking about this purchase in their business? Mm -hmm. They'll mention it at year end, sure. but we always encourage our clients, talk to us, talk to us, keep us up to date. So he calls us up on making this purchase. And we did some research and we found different sized vehicles actually impacted the taxes. Mm. He was able to pick the right vehicle that fit his needs for his crew and had the best tax outcome. And he saved a couple thousand dollars right there. And the second tip. So the first tip is talk to your accountant right. early and often. And the second tip is document everything. So make sure that you run it by your advisor and he's going to tell you, he or she will tell you, you know, all the steps you need to take and you have to do everything by the book. So this comes from, again, from tax-free wealth and also, also Rich Dad. That, that's another book mm -hmm. that I really like, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And he talks about, you know, if you want to be treated like a business, you have to act like a business. So it's the same thing with taxes. If you want to get the favorable tax treatment, that the government is using to encourage business and entrepreneurship, you have to behave like one. And that means doing everything perfectly as a business. So even if it's you running your own business out of your basement, mm -hmm. you want to make, you know, here's the receipt, here's the signed off for the reimbursement, even if you might be taking it from your own business account to your personal account. So always document everything and make sure you're doing everything as a proper business would do and keep track of it like a proper business would do. Yeah, and and to be honest, I mean, there's no excuse nowadays. It's not like you, you know, the old days, and you know, you're arriving in with a big bag of receipts and dumping them on the poor, poor uh, tax person's desk. Um, I mean, you should be able to, you should be able to do all of that and record all of that very easily to, throughout the year. But it's interesting, you do say, I mean, this is a discipline, and obviously as I said, you know, these are the kind of things that sometimes we don't think about, we don't want to think about, we don't want to deal with, but, but the discipline is, is obviously key to maximizing your, your, your tax breaks. Exactly. And another great book I'm reading now, it's called the one thing by Gary Keller, I believe. And he talks about just because you mentioned discipline. Yeah. He says, you don't need as much discipline as you think you just need enough discipline to create a new habit. So mm -hmm. make yourself, you know, Get those receipts right away. You come home, you write the note, you scan it, you upload it to your to your books, wherever you keep it. Do that enough times until it just becomes a habit. Every time you get a receipt, you scan it, upload it, write it. There you mm -hmm. go. It'll save you so many headaches in so many different areas of your business if you keep track of things like that. Yeah. And what's one uh, what's one last piece of advice that you would give to, as particularly to entrepreneurs out there regarding tax? So... I think it is dream big and be practical. So like I mentioned before, how it's it's kind of, you're being a little bit more aggressive with the tax law when you take this approach. Mm -hmm. And then I said, I kind of don't see it the same way that it's not really being aggressive because you're finding all the actual practical legal ways. So you should be dreaming really big and chasing ambitious goals and then making sure that you're finding the right ways to do it properly and with that mindset, you're going to be able to achieve a lot more is possible than you think. Yeah, absolutely. Well, listen, this has been fantastic, Shmuley. All of Shmuley's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and your company. Sure. So I run this company together with my wife, Mushki. And we started a few years ago. We had been working with a few entrepreneurs and we kept seeing the same problem again and again. They start seeing that success. They're ready to grow and scale their business. And suddenly they're faced with the high tax bills and they think to themselves, there must be a better way to do this. And that's where we come in. We show you that better way. We show you the out of the box creative strategies that you could take advantage of. And in fact, I could send you a great resource. If you go Please. on my LinkedIn, so I'm on LinkedIn as Shmuley Munitz. 
and there might even be a link to it below. And send me the word quiz. I'll send you a free resource. You give a couple information about your industry, your business, and you get a bunch of tax strategies that work specifically for you. Yeah, well, fantastic. Um, that's a fantastic resource. Well, listen, thanks again, Shmuley. Thanks for this um, great, great advice. I hope anybody out there who is either has a business or start thinking of starting a business that you heed the words of Shmuley, reach out and have a look at uh, the resource that he was talking about right now. Uh, again, thank you. Thank you for watching and listening. And I will see you all again very soon. Thank you. Yeah.